All right. Real quick. Let me talk to you. All right. Let me talk to you for a second. Now, I don't know. Let me see. We got any ladies in the building? No, I don't think we got any ladies in the building tonight. But I'm going to talk to the ladies in the building for a second, okay? Now, I've been around these YouTube streets and I've been around these conversations, around these conversations about black men, black women, relationships, who's at fault, who need to do this and who need to do that. So I've been around that for a, for a long, for about a, over a little bit over a year now. And one of the things I, I kind of want to talk real quickly before I get into our subject today, I want to talk about responsibility. So one of the things that I get a lot of pushback on or I hear a lot of pushback on various platforms from our ladies is the volume of responsibility that they have. A lot of our ladies are always sitting around and they're talking about and they're trying to get us to hear how difficult it is for them to carry the kind of load that they're carrying. And a lot of our ladies are sitting around talking about how heavy the load is. They're they're taking care of two or three children, they're taking care of parents, they're they got to work a full a full-time job, sometimes a full and a part-time job. Some ladies I know who's doing all that covering two full-time jobs, some of them are doing all this, they're in school. And so they're always talking about the 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 the, the responsibility load. And I and and to be fair, you know, I you know, I understand when you are carrying a lot on on you, that can be cumbersome. But, you know, I often talk to ladies, especially when I hear them talking about the volume of weight that they're carrying. And I tell them all the time, you are not designed to carry that amount of load. That is not what you're designed to do. But unfortunately, too many of our ladies are out here carrying that level of load on, on them. And a lot of them feel, notice I said, Feel, a lot of them feel like they're carrying the burden, carrying the load because they have been abandoned by some guy. And I mean, you know, you can't really um, knock them too much about the way they feel. So because that's what that's how they are interpreting and internalizing their situation. Now, just because they happen to feel that way that does not mean that there's that there are not circumstances or situations or should I say decisions that have led them or got them in that situation. But the more we've had these conversations out in public, or when I say public, in YouTube or Instagram and all this and TikTok, it, even in our even with one another's privately off of social media, when we've had the, a lot of these conversations, these ladies, they come across like they they come from a a perspective of being of that they're being victimized that somehow that they were duped into their situation to care especially when we're talking about the burden of the of them raising children so a lot of them feel like that black men have abandoned them and abandoned their responsibilities now of course over the last few years that many 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 black men that have come across youtube especially the guys like kevin samuels coach greg adams you know, and, and the like have come on and we have knocked back that narrative that quite frankly, the problem is not the, 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 the volume of black men out here. As it turns out, according to the data, and I know data, st statistics, factual, measurable information is like kryptonite to our ladies. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. They refuse to accept it. And the reason why they refuse to accept the data, the statistics, the empirical facts is because they come from a place of how they feel in there and what they can see. Our ladies do this all the time. They walk around with blinders on each side of them and nothing outside of their blinders exists. So they only see what's directly in front of them. And if what's directly in front of them are the bum busted, you know, dirty dick Dillinger men that they that they've allowed into their life, produce children with. That's all they see. And then contrary to that, what what compounds that or what 
reinforces that for them is that they got other women in their workplace, in their in their home, in their families, in their social, like their friends. They got other women who walk around with the same blinders on and they exchange war stories. And they don't, and they think because they exchange war stories and because they run into another woman or another group of women or the women around them all share the same experience, then that means the entire world is like that. Even though what they see is very small and very narrow. They don't know they're only seeing very small and very narrow. That is the reason why our women refuse to accept the fact that 54% of black men are single, childless, and over 60% of them are earn enough money to be considered middle class. They absolutely refuse to accept that because in their world, through their lens, through their blinders, all they see is the men that they've had children with and the men that their mothers, their aunties, their co-workers, and their friends have had men with. A lot of them actually share baby daddies, but they don't believe that either. Even though their kids' fathers, because a lot of our women got multiple kid fathers, their kids' fathers, all, most of them had multiple children with multiple women before they came to them. So our women, once again, believe, they absolutely believe that the majority of black men have children and are not participating in their children's lives because of their narrow experience. And because, and they refuse to accept that 18% of black men make up 80% of the children in the community. They refuse to accept that they are sharing men. Now, hold on a second. I know what you think this stream is about. You think I'm going in on our ladies. I really am not going in on our ladies. I'm giving some context to what I'm actually going to be talking about. Now, so part of me, to a degree, because I get accused by my family, by women that I've been cool with for a, for, for a decade or more of having a beef with or, or, or got some kind of resentment or anger against black women and the same women, women in my family, I'm talking my sisters, my cousins, uh, aunties, my the ladies that I that I am friendly with, who know me, all of these women, they sit there and talk about me having a a a problem or a beef with women, black women, even though damn near all of them have received benefits from me. If I hated you or had a problem with you, when I saw you struggling. When I saw you in need, I would have left your ass in need. A black man who calls and holds you to the fire is not somebody who does not like you. We are holding you to the fire because we do like you, because we do care for you. And I know I was told today by someone, a 70 year old woman, she told me, she goes, the reason why you had. This is a lady that I was I was involved with her daughter. She goes, the reason why you're having issues with my daughter is because you are the first mature, stable, goal minded, character driven man that's ever graced her path. And she doesn't know how to interact with you. She doesn't understand that setting boundaries, setting expectations. She doesn't understand what that is because that feels foreign to my daughter. I've been working with her, but she doesn't understand because she's never seen it. And the woman, the seven-year-old woman, you know, I ain't never heard. I was just blown away. The woman said, I failed my daughter. I was like, damn. 
you know, that's what happens, you know, sometimes. So our women have a perspective because of this. And then they get confirmation bias because of all the other women around them that are like this. They have blinders up. They absolutely do. Hold on a second. Gotta gotta pay some homage. Money making is my thing because I'm trying to be rich, trying to put away meals. Here comes the money. Here we go. All right, shout out to the homeboy Eric Jordan with the $2 super sticker, brother. You know, look, here we go again. It, Mr. Jordan, how many of you, how many last $2 do you have? How many last $2 do you have, brother? But these last $2. Last $2. I wonder, do, Eric, do you got a, like a stack of $2 bills? You know they got $2 bills, right? Do you like go to the bank every day and get like a stack of $2 bills and then pass them out to your favorite stream? <laughs> to your favorite streamers? All right, shout out to Guys, listen. Messy Michon, thank you for the ten dollar super sticker. So, um, I think two streams ago, I was talking about you know different platforms, and I made the mistake of saying describing Michon's <laughs> describing Michon's channel a little bit and artfully hey you know we get up here we try to talk we try to and, we, and sometimes we just we just we just you know you know run our foot right in our mouth i'm a man i'm gonna do it from time to time so i sent i, I apologize for that messy michon your channel is not ratchet i didn't i didn't mean it to come out that way i actually fucks with my ex messy michon and i've said and i've taken some time on my live stream to explain just how much how phenomenal of the work that she's doing over there. I just don't have the energy to do that kind of work that you're doing. <laughs> this is not alcohol. It's tea. I know it's like in a whiskey glass, but it's tea. It is tea. So, I am saying all of this today. Tonight. Because I want to talk about something very specifically. <laughs> There's this concept out here called the son husband. The son husband, believe it or not, one of the beefs that I believe that our women have legitimate gripe about is some of us are not necessarily fit for um, being, I wouldn't say fit. Some of us do not have our, some of us men do not have our priorities in order about our women in our life and that's because ladies i keep i'm gonna keep pounding this over and over and over and over you need to understand i don't if you're a black man you need to understand that when you are you're at at 35 at 30 at 40 you are dealing with a 35 40 year old and you have this presumption because they are a chronological adult that they have the prerequisite skills to function the way that you would think a, a typical 35, 40-year-old adult has. But you need to understand, understand something about us melanated people, us black people. Almost all of us, with a very few exceptions, were raised in our in homes exclusively with our mothers. This is not a blame. Well, we were raised in our home and homes exclusively with our mothers. And so therefore, the majority of our perspectives, the men and the women, and it doesn't matter how old you are, if you haven't taken the, the, the right pill and woke up yet, you are, you are rocking through life right now with your mother's perspective, with your mother's attitude with your mother's way of handling conflict with your mother's way of relating to other people outside of of the family or sometimes even within the family 
a lot of times I have to catch myself behaving like I was raised by my grandmother, by my like my grandmother. It is a conscious effort that I have to make when I hear information, when I hear things that I do not like, my and the reaction you get is not the first reaction that I have. My my internal reaction to almost everything is to pop off. So when I'm not popping off, you need to understand for me, that's because I've literally had to restrain myself from doing so because I am programmed like my grandmother. And that's very problematic for women who are on the market trying to find a suitable husband that looks that and he looks like a man, he sounds like a man, but he might behave differently. The other side of that is when you're specifically talking about women with their sons. Too many of our women have replaced the father or the man that they would like to have with their son. When these men these boys grow up to be men and they're out here searching and looking. A lot of our ladies, unfortunately, have to deal with the fact that there's another woman in their, in that guy's life who's more important to him than you. And you have to, and a lot of women out here are having to deal with the fact that they will always be this other woman. You may care. You might marry him. You might be fucking him. You might be gawk, gawk, gawking all over the brother or whatever the hell y'all want to do. But you're number two. 